Hey, I was looking at some of the videos on here about creating PayPal buttons and uh, there seemed to be a lot of mumbling and uh, I found them a little bit hard to follow so I thought I'd do it my way. Um, so if, if you're going to create a button and you want to sell something, uh, this is just for your standard product. So you might be selling an e-book or a, uh, something in a zip file, something like that, and you want the person to pay via PayPal and then go back to your website to collect their download. So let's have a look at that. Uh, the first thing you would do is go into Merchant Services or click on the Merchant Services tab and go to Website Payments Standard. Now the most secure way to do this is to actually host the button at PayPal and it also happens to be the easiest. So let's do that. We want to create a Buy Now button. We'll just click on the Create One Now link for the Buy Now button and then wait. Okay. So then we start the steps. So what are we accepting a payment for? In this case it's a product, but you can accept a payment for services, subscriptions, donations, gift vouchers. So let's stick with products. We don't want it to be an add to cart button, so we'll leave that on no, create a buy now button. And we want to sell something, so let's say we're selling a fancy program. That'll do. Uh, Item ID can be anything you like, it's really only for your use, so we'll call it FP001. Uh, set the currency to whatever your local currency is, or I always sell in United States dollars because that's where I do most of my business. Uh, so let's say this one is going to be $19. There we go, so we've set the price to 19 US dollars. Now you've got lots of options here and in most cases, particularly if you're just delivering a product, then you won't use them but I'll just click on them so you can see what's here. You can add different price options and it puts this drop down over the top there but uh, as I say, you're not going to need that for a, just a standard product uh, and a drop down menu without prices. Uh, again, advanced stuff that we don't need and I don't need to add a text field. If I wanted to, I could do this. Uh, click on done and I put fancy program there but I don't want to so we've got our buy now button there there's no postage because it's a digital download and I'm going to use my secure merchant account ID rather than my email address so let's go to step two so that's ticked save button at PayPal we want to do that if you untick that it, it would give you some code but um, it would have more in it and it would ma possibly be less secure. I mean, these days PayPal isn't too bad. In the old days, uh, it used to show things like the return URL that you were sending people to and things like that. Then they introduced encryption, which improved that. But I think the hosting option is even better. The only situation where this wouldn't work would be if you were using some sort of membership script uh, where it actually does the, the transaction to PayPal. But uh, in the case of just a, a basic website where you have a thank you page, this is the way to go. Now we don't want to track inventory or profit and loss. So we go to step three where we customize it. Now this is a very important step. Uh, do you want your customer to, uh, do you want to let your customer change order quantities? No. Can your customer add special instructions? I'd say yes. I mean there's, there's no reason not to have that. You get, might get a little bit of feedback through there. Uh, they might tell you how terrific you are. It's always a good thing to hear. Do you need your customer's postal address? No. Digital delivery. Um, now, two options here, two URLs. Generally I don't worry about the cancel URL, but look, if you're a smart internet marketer, then you might actually set that to a page that has some other product on it. Um, you know, you could have a, uh, a cancel.html on your website, um, you know, like this Oops. now obviously you would have to create that Whoop. <laughs> self improvement don't like the sound of that tips for self <laughs> don't worry cancel.html now you, you would have to create that web page cancel.html and upload it to your website and you could do that as I say with links to anything uh, or you know you could do it with a uh, you know a picture of somebody giving them the bird I, I wouldn't do that personally because I, I think <laughs> it's probably <laughs> probably a bit rude anyway we're not going to use that so let's do that 
This is important though, take the customers to the URL when they finish checkout. Again, you've got to upload this page and you've got to have a link to the product that you're delivering. Uh, now, you don't want this to be something that somebody can guess. So you can see I've done a couple here just when I was testing. Um, so note how I've named that. It's thank you underscore 1sh5j5t9k.html. Now, in case you're wondering, that page doesn't exist. But I've put random characters in the name of the file. So if, if I just called it thank you.html, uh, you know, then anybody can jump on Google, do a search for thank you.html, uh, and my page will come up amongst all the others where people just didn't think of this uh, and have allowed their, their software or their product to be given away for free. So this is the, the URL when they finish checkout. So this is after they've paid. The payment's been verified, and, and this is where they go. The only exception being e-checks, they take several days to clear, but uh, to be honest, I, I've never really had any trouble with those. Uh, so, make sure you put that randomness in there, and then create that page and upload it, and have a link to your actual product. Add advanced variables. Again, we don't need to do that. We're not very advanced with this. We're just doing a, a basic product sale. So, next we create the button by clicking on that one there. And as you can see, we have some website form code. Now all I would do here is select that by clicking there. I would click with my right mouse button and copy. And then I would go over to my web page into the HTML view of my web page, the, the page that I'm selling from, not the thank you page. Uh, and I'd paste this code into that web page and I'd have a button there. That's really all there is to it. Now the other thing that you might want to do later on, um, let's see it's got go to my save buttons but it's not easy to find. So let's say you've logged in later and you've changed your price from $19 to $9 and you want to edit that button, you need to click on profile. And then in the profile page it's got a, a list of selling preferences and from there you can go to my save buttons. And there it is, there's my fancy program button. I can do several things with that. I can edit it, I can view the code, create a similar button, delete the button, or create a new button. Um, so if I went into edit button, we'll be back at that first screen uh, that we saw when I created this particular button. When it gets there. There we go. So you can see you can change those things that I set before. And that's all there is to it. Too easy, eh?